Welcome to Western Wisconsin Journal. I'm Bobby Pominville and I'm your reporter on the arts. I like to do a variety of, of shows on the arts. I know last month you enjoyed a violinist and it was lovely. Now this month we're going to talk to an author and she happens to be someone I've known for years. So I want to welcome Linda James to the show. Thank you very much. Nice to have you here. I and it. you're just kind of a new author, your first book. And I think it could be really interesting to talk to you about that. Thank you. Uh, yes, it is my debut novel. Um, came out in October. So mm. it's still pretty fresh and new. Yes, very much so. And, you know, like I just told you, I like the title so much because it made me think, now what exactly is, is the meaning of that? And the title is The Space in Between. And I think there is, it has a special meaning. It does. It really does, and I didn't really get it until the end. Well, it's interesting because I've, I had people in my writing group wondering, what does this title mean? Yes. What does this title mean? And yes. they were reading it for the scope of a year plus. Oh. So for them, it was a long, drawn-out process. And I kept getting that question, well, what does the title mean? What does the title mean? Yes. Yes. And I said, you'll get it. Yeah. You'll, you, you'll it, get it. It's, it's something that you won't figure out unless you read the book. Correct. And you, then, you will get it in the end. And then, like I told you, I love the epilogue because you tied it together. Thank you. Yes. Uh, that um, was really nice for me to be able to read that and see, oh, this is what she means. You know, uh, the title came to me not when, the, not when the conception of the book came to me. It, I had a different title. Oh. And it came months later when I was going through some of my old writings, oh. my file. Oh, yeah. And it's something that I had written 20 years ago. Really? And it's the quote that's in the beginning. There is yes. a space. Um, Can you read that I will quote? read that. Because I think that is really well put. There is a space in between that takes away what was and replaces it with what is. And you and can I said, interpret that in so many different ways. Correct. So, Correct. But then when you get into your story, I still didn't know until the last chapter. It's very two. enigmatic. Yes. It could mean a lot of different things. It could, it, correct. And it does actually. If you, if you read the book from cover to cover, it does kind of mean a few different things. Yes, definitely. And I like that because it intrigued me. Good. And I was looking for, well, what does that mean? And of course, I really didn't get it for quite a while. But I think that's good because that makes you want to keep reading. Correct. So now, um, growing up, did you, were you, pretty um, interested in writing or journalism or I know you've had some experiences. Will you tell us about that? Yes. Um, as, a, as a young child, and I've told this when I go to libraries and so forth, um, and I never said it to anybody before oh. going to libraries. So this is kind of now out. It's out. My secret That's is out. That's neat. But I, uh, as a child, I made up characters oh. and I made up dialogue. And yes, and nobody knew this. This was my private little world. Oh, wow. So I didn't have to share that with anybody. That was just my, my private little place. So what, by the time I got into high school, I was very interested in, in the school newspaper and then the journalism oh, aspect yes. of it. So yes. I, was, I was doing some writing all along mm -hmm. um, and drawn to composition type classes and mm -hmm. English classes and anything that had words. Anything that wasn't math or science, oh, I was there. Yeah, I can understand that. So, I mean, that's, yeah. <laughs> but, but isn't that interesting? It takes you way back to high school. Correct. And, and I've been writing all along and I've, I've kept some of my old writing, which is not very good, uh -huh. mind you. Uh -huh. um, but I'm glad I hung on to it because this came from, you know, kind of a lifetime ago. It's kind of a background of what it you is. loved and wanted to do. So writers should never get rid of things because you never know when you might just use even a sentence or, True. or uh, you know, something from a, a, a poem that you wrote that's not very good. You might use that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I totally get it. And yeah. I think that's so interesting that you look at it that way. And um, the the other thing I want to ask you about, I don't know if I put this in here, but is there some kind of a writing class you went to? Um, is there a group that 
you were writing together kind of like? Yes, yes. Now, so over there the is years, something I've, available to people that want to write but don't quite know how to do I it? What I have found out is, and, and I helped create the writing group that I'm in. Oh, because I Because I had been looking for a writing group, yes. but the thing that I've learned about, they're pretty, they're pretty tight-knit groups. Oh, they don't yes, necessarily want to bring in a, outsiders. Oh, and and now I can see why because uh -huh. in the group that I'm in, you kind of put your heart and soul out there. Well, yes. And when you're when you're doing that, I mean, you have to have the trust of the other people in that room. Yes. You know, some things don't leave that room. You, you know? know, you're kind of vulnerable. You're very vulnerable because you have your words, and that's coming from you and your your heart and your everything else. And then what if somebody else adapted it or took it? And, Do you and ever worry about that? I, I didn't worry about that with my group, but I worried well, about it. Other people, maybe. I worried about it when I got to the place where it was a manuscript and it was a pretty good story already. Oh, it was yeah. pretty deep into the story. Yes. And I was pretty selective about who I chose to read it. Right. For that right. reason, for what you're talking about. You, yes. You don't want... I can understand that a little. Yeah, and it's really funny because my sister said, oh, send me your manuscript. And I said, yeah. I'm not sending my manuscript anywhere. No. And she was a little bit offended because I didn't share that with her. Right. But I was being very protective because yes. once you get a story and it's not published, uh -huh. it's, it's your baby. And you protect oh, it boy, like your I baby. Oh, boy, I guess so. Especially your first one. Especially, yes. Because it takes your a while. first child. <laughs> it's, it takes a while to get that put together. Oh my goodness. And you spent hours and hours. Correct. And I just kind of think that, that really would be difficult for me if, if you shared it and then yeah. somehow you lost a piece of it. That would be terrible. You can't do that. That would be terrible. That would yeah. be the worst thing you can yeah. imagine. Yeah. And then as far as the story, um, did you have a certain idea how you were going to approach this? I did. Oh, I you did. did. Um, for years, I mean, I'm not just a writer, but I'm a reader. And, okay. Yeah. I mean, and and, and that's, that's really important, I it think, is. because you is. have so much to to um, think about and so much to deal right. from, and and actually remember things you've read, perhaps. Yes, and I'm the kind of person who likes to read a book that it stays with me for a long time, oh, if not yes. a lifetime. Yes. And I always had in my head, it's like, if I write a book, or when I write a book, I want to do something well enough that it sticks with somebody. Wow. And so I really started studying this genre. I was really drawn to coming of age Oh, books. yes. Yeah. Those are great, great books. Right. I, and I agree. It's so appealing to so many people. I think so. I think so. Yeah. And, and yeah. so that was one thing that I had. I just knew that... If and when I write a book, I want to tell it from the perspective of a young girl. That's what I figured out in the first few chapters. I was like, oh, she's writing it like this girl is speaking, kind of. She's the protagonist. And, and, and I found that yes. engaging. I liked it because I, I liked the thoughts of the young girl. The youngest girl in the family, you might say. Correct. Yeah. So I I'm the of, youngest girl in my family. Well, I am too, and I kind of identified with that. Because, you know, she was making mistakes and she was expressing some things about her sisters. And I just really identified with some of that. Because I wasn't say I wouldn't be saying this or that or the other thing. Right. But I was thinking it like she was. Yes. So that was very engaging to me. Good. Yeah. So you 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 did start out with that in mind. Absolutely. I, I, there were things that I had in mind. Yeah. That was one of them. Uh -huh. Another one was tell it from first person, which I did. Yes. Um, another one was to uh, be a small town Minnesota. Oh, I love a that. A fictitious place. Yes. And, and to take place in the 60s. I didn't know what year in the 60s. Yeah. I, just, I just pulled 1968 out of the sky. Well, well and see, a lot of the events that you mentioned historically tied in. And they were things that I had gone through in my lifetime. So I could remember those things. And then, and then you wrote it as if this particular family responded this way. And True. Yeah. 
And, and you, that was a tie back to my years in college, actually. Okay, wow. Okay. Yeah. I was seven years old, so I had yeah. to, I, I don't recall the whole assassination with, with Bobby Kennedy. Right. Oh, but that I was do so remember, tragic. But I do, yes, and I do oh. remember um, uh, Martin Luther King. Just the funeral. Oh yeah. Just the funeral. Yeah. Because it was it was so powerful to me to see the yeah. casket in the. Yes, it was. So I, when I, identified the year as being those, things going on at the time, I, said, I have to put that in the book. Yeah, I have and to I put love that, that you did that historical piece because it just it tied into those years. Right. And then I could think back to the cars and way the way we lived and the way families interacted. And that I really want it. Piece for it me. was a big piece for the whole mm -hmm. story too. Is mm -hmm. I really wanted people to to feel like, okay, I'm in 1968, and right. there were times when I was writing this book, I was like, I felt like I was living in 1968, yes. and living in this household with this family. Yes, totally. I mean, I was there, and and I could identify with a lot of that because I was in a certain place in my life at that time. I was actually teaching at that time. But I'd only been teaching four years, and some of those things had quite an effect on me. It's amazing how yeah. you can be transported back in time. And, and then how families interact. That yes. was important. And the three sisters that you have in your family, each quite unique. Yes. And I could see familiarity there with things that were going on. So, yeah, it was really a good book for me to read because I just loved it. Thank you. Now, there's, um, I'm going to ask you to give me a short synopsis of the book, although we've been talking about it. Maybe we touched on a little bit of that. And then at, if you could highlight what is important to you to impart to the readers of the book. So first, um, do you want to give us just a short synopsis? Sure. Um, at the heart of the story, and obviously we've talked that it takes place in 1968, mm -hmm. um, we have a family, a mom, dad, mm -hmm. Ivan and Arlene, and their three daughters. Mm -hmm. And um, the dynamics of the, of the sisters. Oh, yeah. Um, that the, the, the oldest one and the middle one do not get along. They tolerate each other. Mm -hmm. And yeah. the youngest one, Anna, who tells the story, mm -hmm. just kind of wants peace in the family. Yes. Wherever she can find it. But yes. but it's kind of anything but peaceful. Right. At certain times. And yes. the and the father who I created to be or I intended to be a firm disciplinarian. Mm -hmm. He once I breathed life into him, he kind of got out of hand and he became <laughs> he became a little more than I mm -hmm. and I just went with that. Yeah. I just went with that. And it seemed to make sense. Yes. The way the events happened. Um, it turned out okay for, for, for me to make him that. How he reacted to different things in the family, and you yeah. didn't expect some of that. Correct. Yeah. So Correct. And, he's, and he's, he's a guy who really wants to be this upstanding man in his community. Yes, very and he, much so. So. He's, so he puts out appearances, but at home he may be anything but. So that's the father of, of the family, but, mm -hmm. and, and then the girls, and mom is, you know, this good church-going woman. She's a good oh, servant. Yes. You know, she's just, mm -hmm. and, and I think she really means to be. You know, she's certainly not pretending to be. She's, she's just a good person. Right. And at um, any rate, the, that's the core of the family, the, the, who they are, and then the extending characters. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. You get the town outcast, Mr. Leroy, yes. who turns out to be a pivotal character. And when I brought him into oh, the story, yeah. I didn't quite know who or what he oh, would become. Wow. He turns out to be a pretty pivotal character, yes. I believe. Um, and I liked the way that he worked into the storyline. Mm -hmm. Because I didn't know that really where that was going, very and then the done. girls, their friends, and the boyfriends, and the you know mm -hmm. just this, this, the normal stuff that are that's going on mm -hmm. with kids at that time. Right. So that's in a nutshell kind of what what it is, and and obviously it's a coming of age tragedy. Yes. So we know that it isn't just all 
yes. sweetness and light, but it's no. it grows a little darker towards it, the it end. It really does, and things ha can happen in families like that. It, exactly, and it's very innocent, and it and it yeah. the the storyline accelerates. I, I would say as you get about mm -hmm. three quarters or so into it. Yes, yes. You you I almost sensed a little bit of a, oh, why are they doing this? And, and they shouldn't go there, or they shouldn't do this. Correct. And that was me planting seeds Yeah, for and, the reader. And it worked for me, because I was like, oh, don't do that. You know, and I was kind yeah, of being did. the mother, in Correct. a way, and saying, oh, you don't, don't go there, girls. But it, then that turned out to be part of the storyline. Absolutely. And it did make sense, and everything was still good for a while. Yes. But then you introduced more. And uh, it was, I'd say it was um, things I didn't expect. Yeah. And that's, I think, what you want. You don't want that anybody to sit down and figure out your book right away. You know? I, I, I did not want that. I, no. And I knew that from the start. And I know there are books right. that I read. I know how this is going to go. Yeah. I know. I just know. I, I probably was thinking, um, I don't, I'm not sure what's going to happen now. It could have But then it that's what makes anyway. you want to read more. And you want to keep true, on following true. that family. And really, this could have turned any which way. Yes, it could have. Yes, it could have. So, and yeah, so I just was really uh, drawn into it, you might say. So, um, pleased to hear that. It's well written. It's Thank really you. well written. Thank and you. you have some really good descriptive things going on in there. I don't always notice this in certain books. Okay. But you had some different wordings and different uh, phrases that I, some I'd heard before, and they kind of fit the era. And then others you had, I was like, oh, never heard that before. And it was interesting that way, too, because I was kind of living it as a family. And I, and I have been told that I, a few oh, times, good. that it was, you know, th there's descriptive things that mm -hmm. really helped Move it along. Move it along yeah. and shape the characters right. um, and anchor it in a time and place, you right. know. And I really wanted to do that too. I really yeah. wanted it to, to the reader to feel like this, like they were in that story, they're in that place. Right. Um, you know, yeah. like I was, you yeah. know, and, and that's what I really wanted to convey. Uh -huh. I wanted to live that myself, but I also wanted the reader to have that same right. experience. So now when you were writing, yes. I'd, I'd like to know how long it took, and, and did you get ever get to a place or a chapter where you just didn't know where to go? Or were you always just creatively coming up with all these ideas? Um, well, okay, so from the time of conception, mm -hmm. is what I'd like to call it, to the time of this book being uh -huh. like this, it was an 18-month oh, process. Oh, wow, that's a the long time. But the writing, but the actual writing time was probably yeah. a year. Oh, well, that's interesting. Yeah, because I was doing research and things of that nature before okay. I actually sat down to write. Oh, yeah. Um, I was I was creating the characters. Oh, I was I was okay. I was I was like even just freehand like, who is Ellen? Yeah. And Ellen is this person who yeah. who's Ivan, you know, and jotting all the. So by the time that I got to actually writing, I had right. a, a pretty good idea of who each of these characters were. Uh huh. Not necessarily knowing what they were going to do always, but right. But sometimes they took on a life of their their own. But uh -huh. that's what I was doing before I actually started writing. I knew the ending. Really. I knew the ending before I knew the beginning. Oh my. Um, and so that's what I had to work with. So I actually kind of almost had to work backwards. At, oh, but that's I, interesting. I worked forward, backward, you know, like, and, yeah. and I wrote a scene here, and I wrote a scene there, and then I right. intersected them all together. Right. So it wasn't wow, just, Wow, I like, don't know if that's the, the way most people do it. it. I think it's probably different for everybody. I would say so. Um, I would think so. I would think you'd have to start with something. But whatever then, it is, you have to write it down. But if you started with the ending, then well, that had to be a little different process to get to that ending. I, I, I had a, I had a skeletal writing 
oh. of the ending. I mean, okay. some of the stuff obviously changed by the right. time I went from the beginning to the end. Yeah. Um, the the one s section of the book, which is right before the very, very end, mm -hmm. the, end the, the incident, then you mm -hmm. know what I'm talking about because you read the mm -hmm. book and I don't want right. to do any spoiler alerts for anybody. No. But that incident was the very last thing I wrote oh. because I had to get to a place yeah. um, creatively and emotionally yes. to make that work. Right. And I left that for the very last because wow. I knew that was going to be hard. Yes, I would think so. So, I would definitely so I had, I, and so then I kind of, when I started at the beginning, you know, you read the first couple of pages and it's like, okay, this isn't too hard. Mm -hmm. And then I kept going. And then I said, well, I can bridge this together. But yes, there were, there were some times where it's like, okay, well, this is, I'm not quite sure where this is going, mm -hmm. but I think I can make this work. Or mm -hmm. just by changing up, like getting away from my desk and my computer and going and writing by hand. Oh, yeah. Or... It, yeah. That just just a little thing like that could bump things along enough so that I wasn't like saying, "Okay, I'm staring at a blank blank screen. What do I do next?" Because I really didn't have that. Oh, that's good. I really didn't um, because I was always doing something, and if I wasn't writing, I was researching and I was editing and I was revising and I was right. doing something related so that it was that I was always in the in the story or in the book somehow. That's interesting because I would have thought. It it would have come out a little differently. And I think it's probably different for every writer. Yeah, I'm sure it is. I mean, not everybody does the same thing. But I have had people come and tell me that they were stumped at one point or they needed some inspiration of some kind or some and creative I burst to get going. Yeah, I, I, will, I, I, would, I will say that because there were, there were some moments that were like, Mm -hmm. This isn't as easy as that, or no, but it, but I wasn't really drawing a blank either, right? right. You know, um, yeah. You, in other words, you were you were always thinking about ideas. It sounds like yes, and I didn't always use mm -hmm. all the ideas. I, I there were things that that came along that was like I didn't even know why or how that happened, or I'm like okay, I'll, I'll go with that. Yeah, or the characters yeah. would sort of determine what's going to be next. Right. Um, right. That's, that's really interesting because um, I think different people have different ways of doing it. For sure. Do you think you're going to start on another book? Oh, it's in the, yeah, it's in the works. It's already in the works. It's in the works. That's so neat. Yeah. I'm glad to hear that. Thank you. Um, so I'm going to ask you to read an excerpt and tell us a little bit about it. Yes. Okay. So as I said a little bit earlier, there's, you know, the three sisters and what I'm going to read here is just a little short snippet, but okay. it, it will tell you, tell the reader about Sally, who's the middle sister, and Anna, who tells the story. So Anna is the, the um, protagonist. Mm -hmm. Sally would be the antagonist. <laughs> and Sally is... Um, She's a determined little girl. She makes up her mind and she's got ideas and she's just gonna, you know, go mm -hmm. forth. And Anna is a little more like laid back. Uh, I don't think, you know, cautious. I don't think we should do that. But they get into, oh, yes. they yep, get into some late. trouble, these two girls. So at any rate, here we go. Sally had a sparkle in her eye that was hard to resist. I had to admit she had the sense of fun and adventure about her. She loved being a little bit naughty simply because it was exciting for her. I knew that she didn't have a desire to hurt anyone or intentionally get into trouble. The bottom line, Sally loved taking risks by pushing the boundaries. I figured she would have, I figured she thought if nothing awful happened in the process, she would have gotten away with doing something wrong. She seemed to like that. I couldn't have been more opposite. I had no desire for risk. Yet Sally always wanted to include me in her foolish plans. <laughs> so that's just a little, like, okay, where is that going? Yeah, and see, that almost sounded a little bit like my sister and I at one <laughs> point when we were growing up. <laughs> because I saw myself as being probably the shyer one at that point. And in my, in my situation, too. Yeah. 
I would say the same so thing. So I was identifying with that already because it sounded like this. And my sister read this and she goes, I know I'm Sally. <laughs> <laughs> so see, I knew that was and Linda, my sister. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> well, anyway, that's, thanks so much for doing that. I know it's not easy to do and I know it's hard to choose. It is hard to choose because you don't want to give anything away. And I away threw it at you what, today, right. yesterday, so it, it was kind of an extra thing that I thought about and I thought, oh, it would be so neat to have her read. Thank you. So now tell me, how difficult is it to get a book published? Well, this is self-published, so okay. not that that's any easy, well, it's a little easier, but it's, but it's, yeah. but it's also a process. Well, I can't the bottom imagine. Line, the bottom line is if, you, if it's self-published or if it's through a publisher or whatever, I, I knew going into it that I probably was going to go self-published because it, right. just because of the, the long drawn out process. Oh my. Um, that sounds difficult. Well, th what's difficult is the waiting. Yeah. And even if you, even if you go self-published, th there's waiting mm -hmm. no matter what. Mm -hmm. What do you need? You need to wait and you need to be patient. Oh yeah. And it just, at every turn, it's like you're waiting for the next step to happen. Yes. Um, plus, pub big publishing, you know, houses have certain right. criteria and certain well, submission. I can't how long it's that harder. Would take. Yeah, it's harder and harder all the time. Yes. And I think a lot of Definitely. it has to do with some of the, you know, we've got Amazon, we've got self publishing now. Yes, um, that's true. It's a lot easier now than it's it used to be. Very, very competitive. Yeah, for sure. And the idea that if you do self-publish and you do get a lot of attention, mm -hmm. publishers notice that. Oh, that's good. And they want to pick it up. Yeah. So that's I would. That's deal. the. That's kind of the direction I went in, that, hoping that that oh, would right. be the case. Right. So, um, but when I finished, and I had a manuscript in hand, and in the, the big process of you know going back through it and revising and and so forth. Mm -hmm. um, I was referred to a, a guy um, who is an editor and who also does formatting and has written uh -huh. books. He's an, he's an author and so forth. He's, so he's covered a wide range of oh, good. things in, in, this, um, in, in writing. So I went with him and, I, in, and he formatted it for me. But oh. there again, it's like here's, here, I had to hand over my baby. Oh, boy. That's... That's difficult. It was very stressful. And because you just have no idea what another person's going to do. And you have to, so at some point in time, you have to trust that whomever you hand this over to yes, is going to take definitely. good care of you and you're going to get this. Yeah. It happened. So, so you so had to give up that trust and let him. I, I did a little him. bit, but you have to, no matter what direction you go, you have to at some point. That's true. Yeah. You have to do that you or you, you wouldn't get to the next step. Correct. So Correct. I, I can understand that. That would be yeah. a little bit tough. And uh, so, I mean, but, but he was great and, and he was wonderful to work with. Good. And um, I referred him, you know, to, to one of my friends and now she's working with him. But Right. And, uh, and, and I know some of the gals in your group, so I know there's some others writing, too. Yeah, coming up behind me. Yep. So, so you can actually get your book on Amazon? Correct. Through Amazon, you can get Kindle. Um, if oh. you're a Nook reader. Oh, yeah. Uh, Smashwords. You can get the book through Smashwords. Oh, that one I've never heard of. But I hadn't either until. Interesting. Yeah, I'm learning. And and you've already been, um, I know that you've been to several bookstores and done signings. To libraries, yes. And libraries yeah. and so on. Have you done Chapter 2 in Hudson? No. That might be one to do yeah. Uh, locally. Yeah. But I know you went to your hometown. I did. I bet that was a lot of fun. You know what it really was? It was a, it was a big deal and they really put out the red carpet for me because they oh had my. my name on the... The, the marquee. Oh, you know, with my the, With goodness. the title of the book. That's and, very special. And a radio interview. Yeah. And, you know, an article in the paper. Oh, yeah. And then I sat down for another article. And it was, it was, it was, it was really heartwarming. And they, they that were That is so neat. I mean, they just kind of enveloped me as like, here's our, here's our person. <laughs> so that was very, very nice. And what I just completed doing, and this is a bigger process because of all the libraries that are in Hennepin County. 
Oh, there are right. like 41 libraries. Oh, in. that's a, quite an area, isn't it? It really is. So I'm now working on my, I finished the submission for that, which is oh, kind of a big, big deal. They require a whole lot more than other little good. local libraries. So I've got an enormous packet that I sent to them with, with everything that they want. Uh -huh. um, and I know you've had some things on Facebook. Yeah. Even an excerpt. Right. And you've had some people commenting too that, that correct. Really, I I think that helps move it along too. Yeah, it's amazing. You know, social media. I mean, I only do Facebook. I, I don't, you know, tweet. I yeah. don't, you know, I don't know anything about all the other stuff. But it would probably be, be helpful for me. I don't know. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I am. I am also working. Um, one of the next ones will, will possibly be Osceola um, cool. Library over there. In the spring, okay. I think I may be going back down toward my hometown, but to northern Iowa. Oh, is that close get, to Iowa? It really is. Oh, I it's, didn't know that. Yes, yes. Jackson, I wasn't sure where that was located. I Jackson, knew it was Minnesota, southern Minnesota. Like right on the, right on the cusp. Okay, all so, right. Yeah. So very good. Yeah. So um, let us know if you have any book signings or anything coming up. And we'll do. That would certainly and be And I Facebook. always like to follow up, too, if and when you have another book. It's in the works. I think that would be fun. I, I'm, I'm writing. Good. Very good. Well, this is really fun for me talking to you, having known you for quite a few years. And, Thank you. I appreciate and it. And then seeing you do this, it's, it's so neat for you to make this work for you and I can't imagine how difficult it is to do something like this. See, I can't even imagine doing it. I have heard that over and over again. Yeah. And this was supposed to be, it was supposed to happen because a lot of things really lined up Yes. nicely. That's great. And um, I, I don't feel like I forced anything. No. It, 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 I, I think you know what I mean? There, there's, there's sometimes people like, well, oh my goodness, I had to jump through hoops to get this done and that. Yes. It just really was supposed to be. Yeah, I think so. And um, I want to thank you a lot for coming on the show today, Linda. Well, it was you. great appreciate it. fun talking yes, to you. Yes, appreciate it. And, of course, we wish you well. Thank we you. hope all goes well in your writing of your second book. I appreciate it. <laughs> and we thank you for watching today, and we hope you enjoyed the interview and might take a chance and read the book. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.